In this video, I'm going to show you how to reconnect your Give Energy system back to your Wi-Fi. So, for example, if you've changed the password and you need to connect this using that new password, using the new credentials. Before I get onto that, though, so if you don't need it, skip ahead on this video. I'm going to give you a few tips in terms of connectivity for Give Energy and other smart systems because it's all very similar. So you can have the most stable experience. The first thing to mention that is definitely worth doing if it's possible maybe installation by your installer or maybe by you running a cable from your inverter to your router wherever that may be a physical cable will always trump wi-fi not just with a give energy system with anything it's stable it's faster it's always on and no passwords are needed it's not always going to be possible of course or well it will be possible but it's not always not going to be realistic because it could be at the other end of the house but if you can it's definitely worth doing now this may solve a lot of people's problems it's one of the most common questions we get and i might be able to save you a lot of time so let's imagine in this scenario you're changing your internet provider and they're giving you a new router so let's say you've gone from bt to vodafone so Vodafone will send you the new router, you've plugged it in, and of course the Wi-Fi name and password is different to your previous one. So rather than run around your house and change everything you own to the new credentials, the new Wi-Fi name and password, just log on to your new router, change the Wi-Fi name and the passwords so it's the same as it was on your older system. So if it used to be BT Wi-Fi 1234 and a password of whatever, then log on to your new router, change the name to BT Wi Fi 1234, same password, and all of a sudden everything in your house just reconnects. You don't have to tinker with your laptop, your phone, your smart speakers, your Give Energy Inverter, for example. It will just, well, it'll be the same as far as all the devices in your house are concerned. Some people are using these power line adapters to use a network cable to connect to their inverter, which is fine. For the most part, they work quite well, depending on the brand, of course. But the one little tip we have picked up on, if your plug socket is here, for example, quite close to the inverter or battery or an EV charger, or something like that, then there tends to be issues, interference perhaps. So if you are using one of these and you've got a plug, let's say at the other end of the room, wherever the inverter is, then try and place it at least one meter away and then have a long network cable going from wherever that is to the inverter. Next is configuring your Wi-Fi router. Now, typically, by default, they will come with a dual band network. So what that means is that you will see, if you scan for your Wi-Fi on a tablet or a laptop, that it will say, my home Wi-Fi. Let's imagine that's what yours is called. And it will broadcast on, typically, but there are newer versions now, five and 2.4 gigahertz. So that's two different frequencies broadcasting on one Wi-Fi name. On paper, you read it as the router will pick, or the Wi-Fi system will pick, which is best. You're going to go on 5 gigahertz, you're going to go on 2.4, and sometimes it flicks between the two. However, over 20 years in IT experience tells me that some Wi-Fi systems are better than others, shall we say. So having a dual band system should work fine, but often it can cause compatibility issues with very smart Internet of Things devices. Smart plugs, smart speakers, a lot of us have got them now, inverters, video doorbells. So instead of broadcasting one Wi-Fi name, one SSID, you're broadcasting two. One will be fixed to five gigahertz, one will be fixed to 2.4, so you can manually decide what device uses which. My general recommendation, because there's a lot of people with different configurations out there, I can't possibly cover all bases, but generally speaking, if it's something I use, like a laptop, tablet, phone, games console, a smart TV, then I will put it on five gigahertz, if that's an option, on the device. Whereas everything else, like smart plugs, doorbells, inverters, things that just need a connection, the hardly use any bandwidth but they do need a stable connection then i would put them on the 2.4 gigahertz network which we've now separated the reason for this is because 2.4 gigahertz can penetrate walls better it can reach further than five or six gigahertz think of it like long wave and fm fm sounds better it's in stereo but long wave for those that remember it could go further so therefore 
if that's what we need as a priority, a connection over speed, then that's why we would separate it and put all our smart stuff on 2.4 and anything that needs a lot of bandwidth on the five gigahertz network. In terms of how you do this on your system, I can't possibly tell you because there's a billion different routers and Wi-Fi systems out there, all with different instructions. However, the simple and easy solution to this is to either contact your internet provider. So if you're with Sky or Vodafone, contact them and say, I'd like to separate my five and 2.4 gigahertz network, please. This is extremely common. A lot of people do it. It's something that comes up online all the time and they'll know instantly what you're asking. Or just quickly Google how to separate 2.4 and 5 gigahertz on Vodafone or BT or whoever you are with. And the instructions almost always come up at the top. Another thing we've noticed recently that can cause compatibility or connectivity issues is that some new routers are coming with WPA3 encryption which is a newer standard. Not everything supports it yet, especially some of the smart devices I have in my house. So you may have to drop that from WPA3 back to WPA2. For the 2.4 gigahertz network, at least, whatever the smart devices are using. This is a current standard. It's not insecure or anything like that. It's just, well, more things support it. Therefore, it will ensure connectivity. And I think most people will choose connectivity and stability over being on the latest standard, which not everything supports at this stage. Right, hopefully that solves some people's problems. But if you're thinking, no, stop waffling on. I've changed my password deliberately. I want to reconnect this to my network. Well, how do we do that? Let's start by getting a device. So I'm using a laptop. You can use essentially anything that can connect to Wi-Fi and has an internet browser. So the first thing we're going to do is connect my laptop, which is what I'm using, to the inverter Wi-Fi. So I'm going to go to my Wi-Fi scan area, if you will, it's in the bottom right-hand corner on a Windows device, to see what I can find. And we should see not only my networks in my house, but also the router itself. So that's it there, where it says WH224, blah, blah, blah. Yours will look something very similar to that. A couple of letters, and then a jumble of numbers and letters. So what we're going to do before we connect to that is forget the networks that we're currently using. The reason for this, so in my case, I'm going to right click on my five gigahertz separate system and click forget is because some laptops, some devices automatically reconnect to your home. So we're halfway through tinkering with this and it just jumps to a faster connection. Not all do this, but to be as safe as possible in this video, which everybody can be watching, I'm going to say disconnect from your Wi-Fi completely. So it's as if you're connected to nothing. At that point, we can now connect to the Give Energy Wi-Fi system by clicking on the, in my case, WH224, blah, blah, blah. Click Connect. Now, for me, this will not prompt for a password because I've turned it off for the purposes of the video. However, some will be like that. Some will have a password. This will have typically been done installation by your installer, so you should have the password from them. You may have changed it yourself. So if you have that password, and it prompts for one, then type it in here. So you're essentially connecting to a new Wi-Fi system, just like you would do at your house. If like mine, yours connected straight away and you want to secure it, which we would recommend, of course, then I'll show you how to do that near the end of this video. So now we're connected to the Gim Energy Inverter, the Wi-Fi at the top in the address bar, type in 10.10.100.254. Press enter and it will come up with a username and password request. The username will almost certainly be admin, but you may have changed this yourself, lowercase, A-D-M-I-N. And the password in my case is the same, A-D-M-I-N. Yours may be admin admin as well, but ideally that should be unique. And again, at the end of this video, I'll show you how to change that so it's not the same as the default. This is the first screen you'll see, and it's probably already like this, but if not, make sure it says STA mode, and transparent mode. If not, change that and click apply. So we need to click on STA interface setting and you'll see there where it says AP's SSID, HF-A11X, blah, blah. There's a search button. We want to click on that now. That brings up another window. Let me just put it in the middle there. And that's gonna scan what it can find in your house. Give it a second. You can see here, that's my 2.4 network. 
So I've put a dash five at the end of my 5G, so they're separated. So I'm going to click the little circle next to the name. Notice where it says RSSI, 89%. Anything below 60% can cause connection issues and you may need to adjust your Wi-Fi in some way, maybe the positioning of it, maybe a booster. Otherwise it's too weak a signal to have a stable connection. I'm going to click apply. Then it says, please input key because it knows what network to connect to. It just doesn't know what the passphrase is. So that's where it says passphrase. That's the password essentially for your home internet. So in this case, I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's not my password. <laughs> it's already put the security mode in for me, WPA2. So because WPA3 isn't supported at this stage, that's why you may need to just create a WPA2 network for certain smart devices, such as this one. Where it says host name there, pick something unique. Just in case you get more than one Give Energy system and you will know which it is when you look at your router in terms of, oh, that's the gateway and that's the inverter. It just makes it a little easier for future diagnostics, shall we say, if it's got a unique host name. Click apply. That then will connect and it can take a few seconds. Set successfully, restart to use the new setting. We won't be doing that at this stage because we need to go to device management and where it says admin and admin, so that's the uh, password after you've connected to the Wi-Fi of this, change the password to something unique, anything at all, make sure you don't forget it, of course, write it down. This may already have been changed. So as long as it's something unique, that's fine. I'm now going to click on AP interface setting because this is where we can put a password on for when you connect to the Wi-Fi. So if you remember, mine connected straight away and didn't prompt for a password when I was searching for the Wi-Fi on my laptop. So you can see the network SSID name there, WH22 blah, 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 where it says security mode and disable. So click on where it says disable, the drop down menu, change it to WPA2 again, dash PSK. And where it says passphrase, pick again something unique, something you're not going to forget, write it down, etc., etc. So click apply, that will then make sure you've got a password to connect to the Wi-Fi and the admin admin password will also be unique. So it'll be as secure as you can make it. Now go to device management and where it says restart module, just click restart. Rebooting, this can take several minutes. So what I'm going to do now is just click refresh on this browser. It's already up and running and that's in real time. I've not edited anything out. It's taken probably 10 seconds to do the whole thing. So now we're connected to my Wi-Fi network. That's it, we, we are reconnected. The admin and the Wi-Fi password may be already done, so you can just skip that completely. If what you've just seen hasn't worked for you, try it again, try it at least twice, just in case maybe there was a spelling error on the password or something. But if you've got no success after watching this video with whatever issue, please do contact Give Energy Support. Thank you ever so much for watching. Any questions, of course, in the comment section, we'll do our best to answer. But anything urgent, please, again, do contact support direct. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.